All right, we're going to check out a video how Asmongold deals with harassment. Everyone who's doing any type of content, any type of media, anything that you're even putting out in the world, you're going to get harassment no matter what. I mean, not all the time. Hopefully you don't. But there's always going to be those trolls. And I want to see how Asmin, the one true king, deals with those trolls. Let's check it out. Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you all about internet harassment and how I deal with it and the best practices to deal with it that I've learned so far. And I'm All right, we're starting off in the right place because that's exactly what we want to do right now. We're trying to figure that out. So how will we do that, Sir Asmin? I'm going to be talking about this primarily on a functional level, like how to deal with it in your stream, on your YouTube channel, etc. And then also how to deal with it in terms of a mental, mental toll, emotional toll that can take on you, and the best way to go about it in the healthiest way possible. To be honest, the most trolls I've gained were like on Twitch when I was like streaming. Because when you're like a one viewer Andy, like you're going to get a bound of people who just come in and try to troll you because you're you're like basically uh dirt you know what i mean like you're nothing um in the grand scheme of it all right we're all worth something but i'm saying as far as like as far as twitch wise and how that goes there's so many people out there that it's just like feels impossible at times but the point is is that that's usually when i got the most trolls you know always trying to sell me something always trying to sell me followers trying to tell me about how to run my stream in a negative way so Seems like he's about to give us how to deal with that. Did I ever, was I ever strained by that? Uh, I wouldn't say I was, but it, it, it was something that bothered me in the beginning for sure. But a little bit later down the road, I understand that, you know, it's just going to happen to the internet. So it goes as no surprise and it's no secret that a lot of people have been harassed online recently. And I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video a year after it came out, this is probably still going to be true because that's just the way the internet works. And I think that there's a very unfortunate paradox of creating content online, which is if you create content online, you should expect to be harassed. You should expect to have people bring up the worst things about you. Like if you're fat, they're going to call you fat. If you're ugly, they're going to call you ugly. If you're balding, they're going to call you balding. I think that's initially like, I think I would agree with that. I mean, you will have to understand that people, there's all types of people in this world who behave in different manners and you just don't know who's behind the screen, which makes it even worse because it takes off you know the person so they're able to just spray like word vomit at you and like toxicity to the point where you know you don't matter as a person you know you're just somebody that's taking their whatever unresolved issues or just you know trying to have fun with you on you so that is for sure that is something that you're gonna have to expect to do when you're you know doing any type of uh media like this so doesn't matter what it is people are going to pick out the most uh unflattering thing about you and then try to use that to hurt you and that's just the way yep. things are on the internet this is something you can expect to happen on the internet and the paradox part of this is that it never should happen this should a person should never have to deal with this a person should never have to be told this kind of stuff they should never have to be harassed but it's a again it's it's a catch-22 you you should not make content online if you can't deal with harassment, but harassment should not happen online either. It's so weird because, like, you almost want to feel like, like as he said, like, you shouldn't feel, people are will not change, you know? They're not going to change even if you tell them they should or they shouldn't behave a certain way. They're going to behave that way no matter what you had told them because that's just who they are. And their personality and your job is to kind of fight those negative thoughts away and understand what they're saying is not true it isn't um i think what's going to be important here is to have like self-value hopefully it gets into that and really regain confidence in yourself and having the ability to kind of deflect all those attacks that they're giving to you maybe even parry them once in a while i mean look at avoiding the puddle you know he's one of the masterminds that like uh giving back a joke and like it and a funny in a positive way. Like, there's ways to deal with it, I think. So that's the world that we live in. So I'd like to tell people kind of how I navigate that space. I've had a lot of times where people have been angry at me. Uh, sometimes I've dealt with it in a good way. Sometimes I haven't. And I've learned from that in both ways. I think that sometimes failing teaches you more than succeeding does. So anyway, I think the first place that I want to start off at is uh, how to deal with, uh, how, how, to, how to categorize 
people's feedback. And I made a tweet about this recently, is that there are a lot of people who like posting their hot takes on the internet. They like, you know, saying the thing that's controversial. They like being a little bit edgy. And then the moment that anybody says... Like, I mean, when you have confidence behind the screen, it's it's going to happen. People value themselves, which you should. I feel like you should value yourself. But there's always going to be those people who just are... Shouldn't just listen to them. They're just trolls. Hey, that's really edgy. I don't like that. Shut the fuck up. You're wrong. That's stupid. Then they're like, oh my god, I'm getting harassed. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. But uh, being harassed on the internet is not whenever people disagree with you, okay? Being yep. disagreed with and disagreement and people not thinking the same thing you do, that's not them harassing you, okay? But there is a lot of cases of actual harassment. So I'd like to show people a little bit how kind of like I, I differentiate the two. So number one is that if a person puts in their comment a personal insult on your physical appearance, that comment goes in the garbage instantaneously. I stop reading it. I stop caring. I stop even taking it seriously. In any oh, he just, he just, it, it, they're like NPCs to him. Like an NPC's talk and you're just going way past them. You're skipping dialogue. You're skipping the lore. You don't care what they have to say because they're not important to the main story. Oh man, this guy's so good. Any capacity. So if they're if if you're if they're calling you fat, if they're calling you uh, ugly, if they're calling you, if they're making fun of your physical appearance in any way whatsoever, you should probably just take that criticism. It's like children, man. When you're on the playground, children are just kind of roasting each other. Like it's insane, man. Like people are crazy. And throw it in the garbage because the odds are this person just fundamentally does not like you, and this is just what's going to happen. Like, yep. You put yourself out there, and there's going to be a lot of people that just simply don't like you. And what's even more odd about this is that there will be people that don't like you because a lot of other people do like you. It's the same as, like, it's contrarians, right? They're the people that hate all the popular shows. They don't listen to the songs on the radio. You know, these kinds of guys. So that's just the way that they are. Oh, he's talking about them. You know, DJ Kelly says them, the haters. That's for a fact. People do not like seeing other people win or gain or be happy you know when you run into a loser like that try to stay clear of them because they will try to drain you with content creators as well you just have to be ready to acknowledge that if you if, if you want to make yourself happy you have to know and acknowledge that there will be other people that don't want that to happen yep and it's not fair it's not good and it is true and i think there's a lot of uh, a lot of elements to this that is pretty much along those lines is that there are things that should not happen but they do, and this is how to deal with them whenever they do happen. So anyway, uh, any criticism, any uh, any feedback that people give you that is... You got to almost like buff your intelligence. You got to put some stats in intelligence, and you got to put some, stack, some uh, stats on defense and really upgrade that because you're really going to need it in any type of social environment or social place because people are going to be people and not all people like other people tied to a personal insult, insult that is tied to your personal appearance, your physical appearance, throw that in the garbage. Uh, the next thing to do is to also look at uh, comments of people that are like actually trying to engage with you. Because I don't think that it's always a bad idea to engage with and try to talk to people that might have a different point of view. But one thing that I've definitely learned is that there have been a number of these times, and I'll, I'll give you guys an example of this, right? So uh, how many of you all have seen, like, I, I don't want to go too far off on a tangent, so I'll try to keep this short. Uh, how many of you guys all see an article, and the article puts out misinformation? And then the article stays up. and All the time. And then the misinformation is corrected later on, but the misinformation has like a thousand likes and the article had a hundred thousand. So the misinformation just doesn't really, or the, the claim that the actual correction has like almost no traction, but everybody still believes the base article. And this is an unfortunate reality of the internet because the base article is probably more interesting. So people care more about that than whether it was fake or not. That doesn't really matter. And I think that also goes into another bigger element that I'm going to talk about soon is treating yourself like an entertainment station and treating yourself not like a person, which is very important. Whoa, like I have not seen this. I, okay, this is going to be interesting. To I'm trying to predict what you mean by that. Maybe trying to take away who you are personally and detach from that when you're being exposed to uh, thousands of people, hundreds of people, a person. And maybe just kind of have a distance in that way, a boundary, if you will, and try to maybe even not 
even if someone is telling you something good, maybe try not to, you know, take it too much either because you do also want to have integrity in yourself, but also be able to defend yourself. I think maybe that's what he's going to say. I think, and I'll talk about that more. But anyway, um, so I, I made a video and uh, a person claimed that they had their video DMCA'd by Amazon because it was showing a hack or some sort of exploit in New World. Oh, that's right. And I said he redacted that Amazon that, was pieces of shit for doing this. And, you know, I went off on a tirade about this. And I said, if this was true. Well, it turns out that it was not true. And um, I, I took the video down. I took it down because I was like, this video spreads misinformation that makes Amazon look bad. And this is why Asmin's a real one. He will acknowledge his mistakes. He is trying to actively learn and buff up his stats. And that's what makes Asmin go who he is and why he's successful. In a way that was not true. And they still made a mistake by DMCAing the video, but it was not for this reason. So I issued a correction and I deleted the original video. Well, people, of course, guess what? People thought Jeff Bezos paid me to do that. So I, uh, I went on and I made an honest, good faith effort to explain to people why I, I made the decision that I did. And they said, shut up. You're just being paid by Jeff Bezos again. Was he paying you to make this video too? Oh, you're never, you are never going to win with the crowd. Once they've already made their minds up something, like it's really hard to like make that wave, you know, kind of neutralize because there's always going to be those people who are like, well, I'm not wrong. You know what I mean? Even though they just don't want to feel like they're, they're stupid. And the reality is that I'd say about half Even of though they're idiots. trolling and the other half are not. And the reason why I'm getting to this is that people never being like, people never like being proven wrong. Yep. And they will, people will more than likely say that they are trolling or, you know, hold on to a bad opinion they have rather than actually change their opinion whenever being presented with new evidence. Because they don't have to change their opinion. They're under no obligation to be beholden to facts or, you know, like science or evidence or anything like that. Because you're behind the window of a screen. They don't, they don't give a fuck about that. They just want to see you taken out. And in a lot of cases, it's not even about you. It's about they don't want to take an L themselves. So even whenever confronted with unverifiably or like undisputably verifiable evidence that this is not the case or another good argument, they will still not believe it because they don't want to. And I think this is another element here is that people are going to believe what they want to believe. And... It doesn't matter how good your argument is. It doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't have, matter how many times you rewrite the same tweet in your head. Listen, people are just This is why it's super important to be your authentic self. Just be yourself because no matter what you do, if you do try to please the crowd, you try to do things for other people, it's just going to end up biting you in the ass because at the end of the day, it will never be enough. I'm just going to think that, and it doesn't matter. I've always used a phrase, uh, you build a hundred bridges and you suck one dick. You're not a bridge builder, you're a dick sucker. And it doesn't matter what the proportion okay. is. It matters how interesting it is to say what the, what the different things are. What's more interesting, a dick sucker or a bridge builder? Well, I think a lot of people would say a dick sucker. So that's just the way the world works. And... The reality is that oh, oftentimes, like I always looked at myself, because again, like whenever you take criticism, I think it's important to kind of create an effigy of yourself that is who you are online. And uh, it's kind of like a, a target dummy, a scarecrow, whatever you want to use. There's a million metaphors for this. But the point is that people attack the person who you are online, not necessarily you, because as anybody who makes content online knows, uh, who you are online is not exactly who you are in real life. I think I think I had a lot of trouble doing that in the beginning. I just I'm naturally a person who wears, you know, their heart on their sleeve. And that had to be stopped because I was putting myself in situations where I was just stressing myself out, caring about what other people thought which kind of manifested itself in kind of creating content that is not um, to my liking or that I feel like was as authentic as I could make it. So it, it was a difficult thing to find. Um, I think it was more of a personality issue than it was with the job that I was taking up and the hobby that I was taking up. But I know that it took some time and that was the next thing that I learned was kind of also learning who you are and what you want and setting up boundaries in that way because you are and will get rated.
think that there's a very large spectrum for this. You know, whether it's somebody who's streaming 24-7 or somebody like Dr. Disrespect who completely plays a character. But in general, I think that this is true. Uh, is that you generally act different on camera than you do off camera in the same way that you probably act different around your friends than you do around your grandma. So that's very normal, it's very healthy, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that also it allows you to disconnect yourself and kind of have a, uh, a little bit of dissonance between the things that people are saying to you and the things that personally bother you. And I felt that that helps me a lot. And also, I, I even took this a step further, and I've tried to do this in the last, like, maybe year or two, is that I've looked at everything that happens to me. I stopped viewing myself as a person. I've stopped viewing myself as an individual and, like, what I want, what I need, how I feel. I threw all those things in the garbage because nobody else cares about that. People care about the content. They care about being entertained. And if you're not doing that... Nobody cares about you, and they don't like you. So the way that I try to look at things is that I only look at perspectives, and I only look at doing something from the perspective of how is the viewer going to feel about this. And also, if it's something that's in my benefit, like, I don't know, doing a sponsorship or something like that, then I only look at it from that perspective. And Wait. So he's more saying for the viewer, rather, he will sacrifice himself in order for the viewer's entertainment. Whoa, it's the first time I'm hearing something like this. And I wonder how it is to battle against what you actually want to do and what you don't want to do. How do you balance that and how is that? I think maybe his priority is to be entertaining in the first place. I would I would have to understand that a little further. And I wish I, I could ask him. I'm either turned off. I'm using that as a light, by the way. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I, I try to look at it. In, in that way, and I know this might sound very odd and maybe even a little bit sociopathic that I don't even view myself as a person whenever I'm online. Yeah, it doesn't sound but healthy. the truth is that I'm not. I'm just pixels. I'm not a real person. You don't see me. You're looking at a, a monitor. And you're looking at a phone. And yes, of course, this is a I'm 14 and this is deep statement. But I think that there is a certain level of truth to it. And in that truth, I think that you can actually find solace in the fact that what you are is not this entire person. It's just this version of yourself that people see. And whenever you can contextualize and compartmentalize where you are in that little box, it makes it much easier to be who people want you to be and also to be the person you want to be in another way. So whenever I take in that approach and people have gotten really mad at me for something like that, I don't really care because getting mad at me, hate threads, uh, you know, positive threads. I don't know what those are like, but I... So he's setting a decoy. A shadow clone. I'm just, I'm just wondering how, how does that not blow up in your face at a certain point? I mean, I, when do you start to, when do you, where are the lines blurred at the point where you're being authentic and you're playing a part, you know, and how does that, how do you manage that? I would say I would ask him that. How do you manage, you know, um, being OK with not being fully authentic yourself? You know, not saying not counting boundaries or not counting like things that you, are private to you, but in the sense of enjoying the games that you want to play, kind of watching the videos you want to watch and kind of writing things the way you want to write them. Um, I also understand, you know the viewer wanting to be happy, but shouldn't you want them to be happy because it's you? It's it's a confusing thing. It's a confusing thing. I would have to understand that a little more further. further good. Um, it, it's all the same. It's all content. He's sending so shadow clones. Do anything good or bad that happens to you as content. And I think that way it gives you, not only does it give you a certain level of disconnect from it, but it also gives you a control over it. Because now you're not thinking about, oh, this is happening to me. Now you're thinking about, you know, imagine drawing cards. And if you draw a card that's not the card you want to draw, you still have to find a way to play it, or to play it anyway. And I think that that gives you more autonomy and more control over the outcome in your life. And overall, I think that's a much healthier outlook than to just blame the internet for being mean or to blame a group of people for being assholes or something like that. 
because all you're really doing is blaming something other than yourself. And you can do that, by the way. You can say that it's totally somebody else's fault. And you know what the best part is? You're probably right. And you know what the worst part is? Nobody fucking cares and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how often you're going to go and say that, oh, yeah, this is all these other people's fault. And It doesn't matter to whom. It doesn't matter to you or it doesn't matter to them or it doesn't matter in general. I think your emotions and how you feel do matter. Hmm. I don't know if I really agree with that thing. You know, oh, this isn't my fault. Like, oh, this happened to me. It's not fair. I'm not saying, I'm not saying like as far as like playing victim. I'm not saying victimize yourself, but acknowledge that you know, somebody else did this to you and it made you feel a certain way. You don't like how that felt. You didn't have control over how somebody does something to you, but you understand that you're allowed to feel the way you feel. Does it matter? Yes, it matters because it's a growth process. It's a learning lesson in the sense that you further understanding what you're capable of and what boundaries you decide to have and what things you are dealing with or not wanting to deal with. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. You and should care. to the extent that you start complaining, people will start resenting you. Because as a content creator, and, and this is, again, they're, they're, I'll tell you guys this, right? Wait, I, I think he's doing that right now. He's not going to share. Maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know. This is like 3D chess or something. Maybe he's not mentioning that now because that's part of what he's describing to do. Again, he's, show, he's throwing his shadow clone at us. My first like major like viral moment on the internet was a hate thread okay it was whenever i made my video the asmongold's layer 2010 and somebody posted on reddit and everybody was like wow i guess this is what people people do before they kill themselves or this is what uh you know this i, I bet this guy's never had a girlfriend or i wonder how bad this guy smells or i wonder what this guy looks like or something like that right and it's all insults but the truth is that none of this bothered me because, bro, who the fuck records a video of a bunch of moldy soda cans and then they get upset whenever somebody says it's gross? Of course people are going to say that. <laughs> are you going to cry about that? Then don't post Yo, I've the, seen the video. video. It's that simple. And again, a lot of content creators, a lot of people that watch content creators want to be content creators. What is the number one job that people in the UK and America want to have? Kits. Being a YouTuber. What is it in China, by the way? Astronaut. I uh, I don't know how that's going to turn out. You know, I'll let you know in 30 years, but uh, <laughs> not looking very good. Anyway, so um, you have these people and they want to be content creators. And they see a content creator who is in a lifestyle that they themselves think that this is a perfect lifestyle. They have idealized this lifestyle to be like this is their dream. Their dream is to be a YouTuber or a streamer. And then they have somebody who is a YouTuber or a streamer complaining about it. And this is like a personal insult to them. They're angry at you because they're thinking you should Oh, be no way. No way. I, it's There's no way because it's like I view you. If I was speaking about Asmund, I view him as more as like a human. Like there's no way. Like also his experience may not be my own experience. So I don't feel like if he complains or says something, it doesn't it discredits his or he should not feel that way because he's successful and, you know, he made it on Twitch or he made it in the content creation world. I think it's just part of the process and it's part of him being a human, you know, even though he's sending, sending out shadow clones. Thankful for what you have. If I was in your position, I would be so happy and all my problems would be solved. And maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. It doesn't really matter whether it's true or not. But one thing that I've learned is that complaining about being a content creator to people that want to be content creators, uh, you know, it's a pretty tough audience. So don't even do it. Don't even try. And again, like, you, you know, you want to get it out there. You want to put yourself out there. Bro, you're not yourself. You're a version of yourself. Stop trying to make other people accept you. Stop trying to, you know, make the internet uh, uh, give you their seal of approval. Stop trying to make people tell you that you're okay, that what you're doing is okay. Because the only person's, the only person's, uh, you know, approval that you need is your own. You don't need anybody. That's so true. Um, I guess I see what he's trying to say. Like, if I really, I'm not this person. I'm not very vocal in like my social settings. So I guess there is a part where I play a part in this. So maybe he's saying like, you know, take off the weight of your back because it's not really who you are. 
So don't really listen to them. I guess I'm sending out shadow clones without even knowing that I am either. But, you know, I feel like this is a part of who I am. It's not a part who I play all the time, only especially when the camera's on. But it's, it's definitely a part of me. ...else to give you the approval to be yourself. Unless, of course, you're breaking the law, right? Uh, if yourself is a murderer, then, you know, maybe, maybe don't be yourself. But other than that, say what you want to say, be who you want to be. Because at the end of the day, you shouldn't live your life trying to apologize for who you are. For better or for worse. And I think that living that type of a lifestyle that's more true to yourself gives you much more longevity. Because eventually, if you try to play a character, people are going to find out. People are going to figure it out, and they're going to see what's behind the mask. They're going to see the uh, the man behind the machine, and the immersion's going to be broken, and people won't like you anymore. So it's much better to just be yourself, uh, at least to an extent, or at least be a version of yourself that you're comfortable with online. Not oh, I totally... Now that he says it like that, like, okay, I see what he was saying. He was building up to something. The movie has a good middle part. Okay, so... I definitely agree with that. I definitely do agree with that. You know, be yourself, be confident, you know, have boundaries and understand people are people and they're going to say shitty things or they're going to say great things, but don't consider whether it's good or bad. Just keep going on what you're doing and make sure that you're being as authentic as you can be towards creating the content you want to create. You're constantly trying to, uh, you know, be a different person. Uh, even though, of course, it is contextualized around only being that version of yourself online. Again, another catch-22. Doing these kinds of things is complex psychologically, but a lot of things are online. That's just the way it goes. So yeah, never complain about your job as a content creator. Oh yeah, you can get swatted. Yep, that definitely can happen. Does anybody on the internet care? Yeah, they're going to say that they care, but if you sit there and complain about it all the time, they're going to tell you to get a real job anyway because they wish they were in your position. Never really complain about being a content creator. Also, don't treat your audience like your uh, own diary. Everybody always talks about parasocial relationships, about how viewers get too emotionally attached to streamers. Well, nobody ever talks about how streamers might get too emotionally attached to their audience and think for a second that, oh, all these people actually really know me, and then I'm going to go play this other game and they're all going to love it. But then whenever you're some Warcraft streamer and you're streaming World of Warcraft for 600 viewers, <laughs> you swap over to play Apex Legends and oh my go down God. to 60 viewers, and all those people who said they were there for you, it turned out they were lying. And yep. it's a very hard pill to swallow. But once you do it, you'll be better off. Because once you understand that and you realize who you are in a healthy way, it'll give you a better outcome or a better outlook on who you want to be. Because if you just spend your whole life pretending like you're another person living in a fantasy world, you're not going to do yourself any favors. And you're not going that I've never seen a story like that that ends positively. So what I'm really trying to get at here is that if people are being rude to you or something like that or they're being mad at you or anything, it's important to take what people say into consideration because, again, it is feedback. But at the same time, you shouldn't really have to. I believe in personal censorship. I don't believe in censorship really hardly at all, uh, minus, like, of course, crazy stuff like death threats, doxing, etc. Uh, but I, I don't really believe in uh, that, but I, I do believe in personal censorship. And what I mean by that is that if you fucking hate bananas... Like I'm talking about you. Yep, I was about to say, if you wanna, if you follow somebody, you uh, disagree with their takes, and you're tired of hearing them, and instead of just complaining, just or even if you want to leave a message and then block them, do that, or just leave. You can just leave. That's an option. That's a that's a dialogue option. You think they are the most disgusting? It's to not have a dialogue. Ugly awful things you have ever seen those big yellow dicks i think you should be able to say i'd never want to see bananas again you should be able to blacklist the word on twitter and people that try to push you into talking about it or thinking about bananas you should ban them because at the end of the day you should have autonomy over your own space and who you are and what you deal with and what you don't deal with so if somebody's making you uncomfortable fucking ban them if somebody is trying to argue with you fucking ban them 
You're not going to win them over. to start some sort or block them as well. And there will always be people that are going to say, oh, well, that just means you're weak. Okay. Who's... Why do you need their approval? <laughs> this, this entire... Like, them saying that is predicated on the idea that what they said matters to you. So just don't let it matter. And then do whatever you want that makes yourself comfortable. Because these are, I mean, you don't even know what this person looks like. You don't know them. They don't know you. How the fuck are they going to say this? Well, let me tell you something. A lot of people who are very opinionated on the internet have a very high opinion of their own opinions. And they overvalue them. But the reality is that most people's opinions on the internet go straight into the garbage bin. Hey, I didn't like storm mounts for 10 years in World of Warcraft. I still don't like them. Blizzard's put that in the garbage bin. They've taken it out. They've recycled it. And they put it in the garbage bin about every six months now. Nobody gives a fuck what I think. And you know what? Sometimes that's a very freeing thing. Is to know that you're not... You, you can't hold some, you know, like massive group of people accountable. But, you know, the other, other side of that is that they can't do that to you either. You can be yourself... And you don't need anybody else's approval to do so. Dude, this is beautiful. So, except your own. And of course the platform that you're streaming on, so make sure you don't get banned. But other than that, be yourself and don't say sorry. I don't know why it's so hard for a lot of people. And it's taken me a long time to get to this position. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not at the destination yet. But this is how far I've gotten so far. And these are the things that I've learned over the years. And... I'd like to recap everything just to talk a little bit about it, okay? Number one, criticism that you get that is based off of an insult of your personal appearance should be immediately discarded and not taken seriously at all. Two, no taken. Treat yourself like content. The good stuff that happens to you is content. The bad stuff that happens to you is content. Number one, it disconnects you from the outcome. Number two, it gives you autonomy over it. Three, you need to also... Um, Take criticism seriously, of course, if a lot of people are saying something, but at the same time, don't let it change what you believe and don't let it change who you are. And I would also say a fourth one is, let me think, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this or the best way. Which is hard, by the way. Nobody likes to be uh, the black sheep. Like Nobody wants to feel like outcasted, but you have to, you have to. Individuality is super important and it creates the uniqueness that you need to have content creation, I believe. And, you know, that's that's just the way it's going to be. Way to uh, to do it is that you can't really be canceled unless you become a version of yourself that is antithetical to who viewers think you are. So, for example, whenever people found out that Keemstar said the N-word, nobody really was surprised. You know, like, this wasn't really a big surprise. But if some other person who's, you know, like a big, like a, you know, social awareness person, social justice, uh, they care about this, if this happened to them, it would completely cancel them. And the reason for that is because that person uh, did something that is directly contradictory to the image that they portrayed online. And I've been canceled on Twitter. Now, I didn't know this. I had to have somebody tell me that I was canceled because I didn't check Twitter that day. And sometimes, like, articles will be written. The doppelganger gangs up on you. Damn. Written about how, you know, people are harassing me on Twitter. Uh, I didn't... I really mean this. Like, if I see somebody... Like, if somebody... If, if you type something rude to me, I will just instantly block you. I won't read it. I will just see, okay, this person's being aggro. They're being rude. Aggro? No Hell yeah. I don't have to. There's no reason to. I don't need... And, and if they say, oh, well, you're weak or you have a... You know, you have a, a big ego for doing that. Sure, think whatever you want. Doesn't doesn't bother me. It, I don't. Why would it matter? Why would it matter what they think? And don't be. Don't take things personally. You know, with this okay. fucking refrigerator. So, seems like he just rehashes there. But amazing video. Loved all of it. Really love Asmund Gold. He's definitely an inspiration, at least for me. Someone I look up to as far as content creation goes. I'm excited to implement these in my own life. And, you know, it's fun to see a different perspective and trying to learn deeper um, how to be more confident, how to be more yourself, and learn to not give a fuck. 
And that's the most important thing. But what I would love for you guys to do is make sure you hit the like button, smash that sub button. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.